the January 2024 Spellbinders kits are now available and I have lots to share with you. This year I'll be working with the clear stamp and coordinating die, the embossing folder, 3D embossing folder, glimmer kit, stitching die, better press, wax seal, and stencil of the month. Now that's lots to share. So I am going to just jump right into the card making and I'll share the new supplies as we go. First, let's take a look at the stencil of the month. You can see that I'm laying the stencil down over a glimmer foil plate and that is because these two work together this month. But first I'll share how you can use the stencil on its own. It's a layering stencil that creates a really pretty arrangement of flowers and leaves and you have options of sentiments. So I'm placing the first stencil down over an A2 piece of white cardstock on top of my waffle flower grip mat on top of my glass mat. And that holds everything into place. You don't have to have a glass mat, but if you are ever having trouble stenciling, I highly recommend the waffle flower grip mat. And that is because it is a high grade silicone. It will stay stuck down to any work surface that you have, whether it be a desk or a metal mat or a glass mat or anything else. And it will allow you to stick the cardstock down and stick the stencil on top without adhesive. So, it's great for this kind of stenciling where you really need everything to stay in place and line up perfectly to create your flower. So I am using Distress Oxide inks today with some small shader brushes to blend out these inks over the stencil. And you can see that the stencil has layers for the leaves and the flower so that everything looks dimensional. And check that out. It is an absolutely beautiful flower that comes together so quickly and easily with the stencil. I cut it down to four by five and a quarter to mat it on some light blue cardstock. And I have one of the glimmer sentiments, I'm gonna share that with you in just a minute, that says thanks. And I just placed that on some foam squares right on top. This is the glimmer kit of the month. And so it has the same large flower with the leaves. It also has two different sentiments, one that says thanks and one that says for you. And you could use those together or you could use them separately. Whenever I use the glimmer, I like to tape down my foil to my cardstock and then place that down onto the glimmer and place the clear shim and the colored shim on top, pull that out, and then run it through my die cut machine, which is a platinum six. So now you can see I have the flower done. I'm also going to glimmer two of those sentiments individually so I can cut them into strips if I want. And they just came out absolutely beautiful. I believe that the glimmer foil this month is copper. That is not guaranteed. If it sells out, you may get a different color, but the copper is absolutely gorgeous. So if you wanna get your hands on that, I highly recommend. I over foiled a little bit on the corner here, so I'm just using a sand eraser to scrub that away. It was nice that the only over foiling happened way up in the corner, so I didn't have to worry about going over my beautiful flower there. I'm using the stencils again, this time on top of the foiled flower. So you can see that you don't have to ink over the stems of the flower because those are foiled. So you're coloring in the images. I like to start at the base of the petals and then work my way out so that the base of the petals is always a little bit darker. This time I'll use the sentiment that comes on the stencil itself and that says hello lovely and comes out in that same font as the glimmer foil plates do. Now I'm using more Distress Oxide ink. This time I went for a coral type of coloring with the flower 
as opposed to those blues that we used in the last flower, just for something a little bit different. I still did cut it down so that I could mat it on an A2 piece of peach cardstock and look at all that foil and how easy it is to achieve that colored flower. This is the clear stamp set and matching dies, and you can see the dies that you get with the stamp set that go with the stamp set. So I'm stamping a bunch of the images out here I'm using some Picket Fence Studios hybrid black ink because I wanted to do some alcohol ink coloring. And I just want to show one part of the coloring here, and that is because for this honey jar, I am using two different colors, an orange color and a yellow color. And that is something that sometimes I forget about, honestly. So if you're having trouble finding the exact color that you're looking for, think about combining two of different colors to get that third color that maybe is just perfect. And I thought that the orange and the yellow of the Ohuhu markers ended up looking very much like honey. I have the dies and I'm holding them in place with some Spellbinders tape and then running it through my die cut machine. For the 3D embossing folder, I like to use the adapter plate of the Universal Plate System that is perfectly made to work with Spellbinders 3D embossing folder. So you get a great impression, even if you don't run it through twice, even if you don't spritz it with water first. I trimmed that down so that I have just a little bit of that embossed image at the top of the card. And then I'll pop up the stamped, colored, and die cut images at the bottom of the card. I like that sort of one third, two third, where the white is two third and the embossed image is one third. I think I forget to do that on cards sometimes. I really like the way it looks. I've stamped and I cut out a sentiment and I cut a thin piece of gold mirror cardstock. I'm using my Sweet Petunia's precision glue press to add some liquid glue to it. And I placed that in between the border between the white cardstock and the embossed just for a little touch of shine on this card. Next up, we have the wax seal of the month and this month's seal stamp says made with love in a beautiful script. I've shared before how to do these wax seals, but I just enjoy doing them so much that I have to show it again. So I have a tea light in the little area that holds up the spoon. I like to speed this up to see how quickly the wax can melt on screen. Obviously it takes a minute or so in real life. Once it's completely melted, just pour it out on the silicone mat that comes in the Spellbinders original wax seal kit, and then just place that seal stamp right on top of the wax that you poured out into a circle. Once it's dry, you can peel off the stamp and then you have your wax seal. So I always like to do two or three just so that I have a couple to work with and decide how I'm using them on cards. Once you have your tea light lit, you might as well enjoy making wax seals for a while because they're very therapeutic, I think. They're very relaxing. I always like to add a little bit of paint pen color to the seal itself so you can really see it, especially with the white on white. Now I have one of the 3D embossed pieces of cardstock and I'll just tie it with some white string. This is DMC white string that I would normally use for the stitching dies, but I thought it looked pretty here. And I always use the wax seal circle adhesives. These are genius. They're the perfect size for going behind wax seals. You peel it off the backing and then place it on the seal and then peel off the other side of the backing and then you have a perfect circle to adhere down to your project. I did have that cut down to four by five and a quarter so I could mat it on some white cardstock there. Thought it really pulled out the white in the seal and the string as well. A really simple card to put together though. Here's another one with the wax seals. This time I'm using a thicker DMC embroidery metallic string. And this one I felt like I could do a nice bow with as well. So I always tie it a couple of times because I like the way it looks on the sides when you have several layers of that string. Again, use that circle adhesive and 
that is just a really easy way to adhere down those wax seals to your projects. I have a piece of cardstock that I'd cut some other things out of, so I'm using the precision glue press to add a little bit of liquid adhesive all around those open areas, and then I'll mat this on top of that pink cardstock. Really simple again, but a very elegant and lovely look. Here's the embossing folder of the month. It has a bunch of leaves and it's just a really great versatile background for you. I've cut out and colored a few more of the clear stamps and matching dies and now I'll run some white pigment ink over the embossed cardstock. And that just really helps to draw out the design of the embossing folder. And it's one of my favorite ways to accent embossed cardstock. Now I'll pop up some of these images, again, a honey pot and some bees, and then that sentiment that says happy birthday and matted it on some light blue cardstock. Okay, next up we have the stitching die of the month. Now this month's stitching die comes with several pieces that create a honeybee and several pieces that create vines and flowers. All of the stitching will go on the bee. The vines and flowers are just extra accents. So here are all the pieces cut out. I have four different pieces of vines. I have a bunch of different dark blue flowers. I've cut the bee's body out of gold mirror cardstock and some black cardstock and the wings out of a very light blue cardstock from Spellbinders. So usually I say these stitches are so big and so long and so easy to do. This one is a little bit more detailed. Not a ton, not, it didn't take me hours and hours and hours, but it is a little more detailed and you have to really look at the debossed lines that you can see here on the gold mirror cardstock to show you where to stitch from. So on the B you have sort of that little flower or ampersand look. And then on the sides, you have these slightly longer stitches where you go from one hole on the edge to four holes next to it. So as long as you can see those debossed images, it's very easy to figure out. But look at the wings. They're very delicate looking, especially with that thin silver thread that I used. It's also DMC. I'm using some liquid glue to adhere all these pieces together because when I finish an end of a string on stitching on paper, I use just regular old scotch tape to hold it into place. Scotch tape is not going to stick down to like tape runner or something like that. So you need to use like a good strong liquid glue. Here is how easy these flowers are on the vines. They, you just pop the colorful pieces on top and it looks like the base is underneath and then you have the vines and the leaves. For the wings of the bee, what I decided to do is put small foam squares on the ends of each of them, line them up, and then just place the bee on top. I thought that would be the best way and I did shift some of the wings a little bit. I stamped just because on the same color of cardstock that I'm using for the background. They also have these tiny little flowers. You can use them or not use them. You can put them next to the vines if you prefer, or you can put them here on the ends of the wings. They look really pretty as an accent to that bee. And that bee is so stunning and just looks so intricate and neat with just a few little stitches added. It's not that these stitches are so hard to do, it's just that they're a little bit more detailed and a little bit smaller. I did pop up that bee on the background of an embossed, 3D embossed cardstock, and now I'll pop up the sentiment on a few pieces of foam squares. The vines themselves will get glued down flat to the card. Again, you could have just used the bee and the sentiment. I kind of wanted to use everything that I had put together, so I'm finding places for them on the card, even though this is a little busier than I would normally have a card, but it, it's fine. I liked doing it and putting it together, and I think it does have a big impact with all of those details and elements. This is the 
Better Press of the month. And it comes with poppies in a grouping and two different sentiments. There are no dyes this month. So everything is going to go on the card panel for me. So I placed the poppies off to one side of the A2 grid on the magnetic base of the platform. Then I placed a piece of the cotton cardstock onto the clear plate and taped it in place. Now I'm using a grouping of different Spellbinders Better Press inks, and I'm trying to just ink up the stems and leaves with this green ink. So the cubes are pretty small, you can get into tight places. And with the poppies, I wanted to use three different colors to really show whenever I've seen poppies in California, they're always just these bright, vibrant oranges and reds and yellows, and they just come out in such a burst of color that that's what I was trying to recreate on the flowers. So I have the darkest color, of course, in the center of those flowers, and then black ink for the sentiment. Then just flip that little clear plate over, it magnets down to the base. Once you have that ready, run it through your die cut machine. And check that out. I think I was pretty close to keeping the color where it was supposed to be. There's a little bit of green on one of the poppies, but that's okay. I decided to add a little bit of pencil detail only because uh, this card was done so fast. <laughs> I just didn't know. I wanted to do something else and share something else. So a little bit of pencil detail, especially on the flowers themselves that are just the color of the ink and then the white in the background. I'm just using the side of the pencil to get a really soft coverage. I don't want lines and I don't want to fully cover up any of the details of the better press plate. So just staying on the side of the pencil really gets you just a little hint of color on top, which I think is really pretty and adds to the details of the flowers themselves. I did go over the green part of the poppy with a little bit of an orange pencil to try and fix that up. And then I cut this panel down to four by five and a half. So I only have gold mirror cardstock on the sides just for a little bit of shine. I had so much fun with all of these kit clubs, but I'd love to hear if something caught your eye, whether you're already subscribed to the club or not. Let me know in the comments below. As always, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Not yet, subscribe. <laughs> mm. No.